At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Register for free today. Attend high blood pressure and cardiovascular problems on Wednesday, May 15th at 6 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. This is Dr. Tom Roselle Live on 105.9 FM WMAL. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Tom Roselle Live. We've got another great program for you, a continuation of kind of what we've been doing on cardiovascular problems and blood pressure. We're going to kind of expand on Don't forget, coming up on the 15th of this month, a Wednesday evening, that's 15th of May and the year of you know, 2024, we're going to be doing an in-house program at the Results Center in Fairfax. Uh, it starts at 6 p.m., and we're going to get into the nitty-gritty, and we're really going to work through this. So, And by the way, I told you that if you come that night, bring your own blood work, and I'm going to let you go over it and look at what the different parameters are that you may have been told differently and why you need to look at them a little bit more with a critical eye, if you will. So don't forget the 15th, but to register, you have to go to either rosellecare.com or even drtomrosell.com or old-fashioned way, 703-698-7117 and register. And remember, we have a capacity of 70 people in that room. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting on the elevator, on the steps. I don't know, but we'd love to have you, but please let us know. And if something comes up that you can't make it, as always, please let us know so we can make sure that we have a place for other people. So that's the 15th. Get it done today, right after the program. Just, you know, don't hesitate. Get it done so we can reserve that seat and we can make sure that we're ready for you. But we're going to get into this and we're going to give you preventive things. But today, I want to talk about a specific piece of the cardiovascular profile and what it means relative to your health and, you know, all of those things. You know, we've been touching upon the good guys, the bad guys, and, you know, the maybe they're not so good guys and maybe they're not so much bad guys. And But we want to know how you can begin to shift and correct things that may be showing up that, you know, you're sitting there saying, how do I fix this? You know, my doc wants me to put me on all these medications. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not necessarily the way that you need to go. So we're going to talk about that thing called HDL. And, you know, so what do we talk about? You know, we're talking about high density lipoproteins and they have an effect in the body. The LDLs are the bad guys, right? But as we've talked about, there are really bad guys and there's not so bad, bad guys. And there's a lot of intermediate factors in between. So when we talk about this HDL and the doc says, you know, you got to get these up, but he doesn't really tell you what it does. And it doesn't, he doesn't tell you how to get it up other than take this medication for that. So we're going to talk about improving your HDL numbers. And, but we have to make sure that we look at, you know, the different fractions of that. And by the way, all of this is in your hands. It's in your control. So first of all, we need to understand what do HDLs do? In a general sense, they grab the cholesterols that are not being used in, in the body. They take it back to the, to the liver and the liver uh, breaks them down, gets rid of it, and the process starts all over again. And by the way, the liver is the guy that produces your cholesterols, your total lipid patterns. So we need to know, is are these guys good guys or these guys bad guys? The recommended, according to the medical community, uh, HDLs, these high-density lipoproteins, is 60 milligrams per diluted liter or higher, they say. There's some controversy out there that says if they get too high, there's a problem. But if you're above 60 and at least in the high 50s, 
then you're probably in a pretty good uh, shape if those are the ones that will support the process that we just talked about and not allow these free floating fats to accumulate and stick to and you know we talked about the ldls and homocysteine and fibrinogen levels and coordination reactive protein and what that all means but we're going to get into that in depth on the 15th and remember i said that so much of this can be triggered by stress patterns but body pain that doesn't go away and by the way viruses and we know that we've gone through the last several years you know, scared to death because COVID, oh my God, is out there. But the vaccines also activated underlying viral patterns that were either in your body because of some vaccines that you had at one point or the other, or that you were exposed to, particularly things like Epstein-Barr, cytomegalovirus, and, and the like. So we won't get into those pieces, but just understand that they can make a difference. But let's talk about these HDL good guys, the ones that you know, your body needs and, and, you know, you have to figure out a way to make things better across the board. So when you know that these HDLs, these good fats, if you will, and it carries about one fourth to one third of your, your cholesterol levels that are in the blood that aren't used up and so forth that have a, a tendency to kind of stick to stuff. Um, we have to look at them in a range of what's really good and then how to raise them. So, you know, the question becomes, as I said earlier, HDL cholesterol, good or bad? And the question, the answer really is they can be good, but they may not be as good as we want them to be. So we're not putting the term bad on them. We're just saying, eh, you know, so going back, recap, HDL picks up the uh, excess cholesterols in your blood and takes it back to your liver where it's broken down and it's removed from your body. So high levels of HDL cholesterol can lower your risk for coronary disease. That means the arteries, right, of that surround the heart, but also problems with the heart and also decrease your risk of stroke. So it's like a good thing, right? But it's on us to make sure that we take control of modifying our lifestyle. So, you know, if you look in, into the literature, they're gonna say there's medications, they wanna put you on things like uh, atravastin, they wanna put you, which is Lipitor, by the way, and, you know, then begin to look at the HDL levels. There's several studies out there, one on WebMD, that says that your HDL level 45 milligrams for due to per diluted liter or above is considered normal for the age range of children from two to 19 years of age. I don't know at 19 year child anymore. I don't think so. And particularly in today's world, <clears throat> there's, well, maybe in today's world they are, I didn't say that, did I? But you, you need to make sure that you uh, understand that the body's metabolic pathways are different at different stages of our lives as we go through. HDL cholesterol, can be thought of as the protective guys, the good guys, you know, uh, the healthy protectors. You do it, and they help protect us truly against stroke and heart attacks and coronary plaque, plaquing and disease and things of that nature. An article out of, uh, if I remember, it's Mayo Clinic, and it goes back a couple of years ago. Uh, it says cholesterol levels that are measured, and we just talked about how milligrams in per dilute, diluted liter. We won't get into what that all means right now. Uh, but you have to understand what they really are measuring. And you know, cholesterol le me levels are measured in milligrams, and then they're subfraction down into HDLs and LDLs, and then their subfractions as well. Um, oddly, you know, people who naturally have extremely high HDL levels, and we're talking about above 100 milligrams, according to this uh, article, appear to be at a higher risk of heart disease. And that's what I said a minute ago. Is it really good or is it really bad? And I said there's an argument that says that if they they get too high, they're just as bad. So, and this is out of a very prestigious you know research institute, right? Uh, we're talking about the Mayo Clinic. So why would they say that? 
Why would they say that really high? And a lot of your doctors say, oh, the higher is the better. Not necessarily so. To some extent, you know, we're looking at these high cholesterol levels that are increasing the risk if they're above a certain level, but we're also saying that we have to have it within a certain uh, sweet spot to be able to decrease your risk of heart attack and stroke. So it's not as clear as the benefits, you know, and the 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 problems are being pointed out. So, but on the 15th, I'm going to get into that in detail and I'm going to show you why and I'm going to show you what you need to do. But if your your HDL levels are really low, you got to look, start looking at lifestyle. And they're typically lower in in people who have something called metabolic syndrome. And that's like blood sugar problems and uh, blood pressures that go up and immune conditions and so forth and so on. It's a cluster of conditions. And we're talking about fat and blood pressure, I said, and, and uh, sugar levels. Besides helping you lose weight, when you modify these HDL, it has also, there's another piece that you have to look at, and it's your triglycerides. And we talked about that last week and the week before, but there's a, a relationship between the type while you're increasing your HDL. Now, this goes where the good guys and the bad guys are. But we're going to kind of put this together uh, on the 15th, and I'm going to show you exactly. But for right now, I want to show you the things that can modify bad fats but increase the HDL. We want that HDL in a perfect world. I'd love to see it above, you know, about 68, you know, 70, guys above 50. You want to get it into that area. So what would make a difference? Well, if you're eating way too many saturated fats, or you know, God forbid you're getting trans fats, uh, you got to stop it. You know, are you uh, getting foods that have shortening in them, you know, like the old fastened Crisco, but there's other modifications that that causes a problem, you know, and cakes and cookies and, you know, all of those things, margarines. How many of you still using margarine? It's like blows my mind. You know, it came out years ago because, oh, my God, dairy was such a bad thing and and butter was such a bad thing. Not so much, my friends. You need butter. You need organic, good butter. That fat is <clears throat> important for your body to function in many different ways. But here's the deal. Here's the things that you have to be aware of. If you smoke, stop, period, end of story. And we're talking about e-cigarettes, we're talking about cigars, we're talking about cigarettes, we're talking about being exposed to those things on a very regular basis. You got to get rid of it. If you smoke, find a way to quit. Reach down inside and understand that it's not only going to drive the bad guys and the triglycerides, but guess what it's also going to do? It's going to cause cancers and coronary disease and inflammatory reactions and things like that. So stop it already. Get rid of it. You know, you're just adding insult to injury and you're going to make things a whole lot worse. Now, here's the here's kind of a double-edged sword. They say moderate use of alcohol, like a glass of red wine and so forth, seems to be very supportive of raising HDL levels, particularly red wine. But they're also saying regular alcohol as well for guys you've got you know glass or two of red wine a day and when i'm talking about a glass or two i'm talking about no more than six ounces at a time my friends uh and if you're drinking something hard about an ounce of alcohol and you know if you do that you're probably going to be in a safe place but here's the catch 22 if you go above that obviously it causes a problem with what liver function and when your liver is not working, then this whole mechanism we're talking about is not going to work. So it begins to cause that other problem that we're trying to get rid of, that we're dropping our HDLs, we're increasing our total cholesterols and so forth. So too much cholesterol, you know, in the body has got to be stored. It's not just going to be stored in your arteries, which is one of the first places it's going to go, but also around your waistline, you're going to put on weight, your blood pressure is going to go up, and your, you know, your triglyceride levels are going to get altered as well. So, you know, because it's Mayo Clinic, and because it's medical, they're going to get into all the different types of medications that can make 
a difference in dropping it down. But they don't tell you about the side effects of these medications, which we're going to get into on the 15th as well. Trust me, there's so many of them. If you knew what they were right now, you'd be going into, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. But you know, instead of that, just pick up the phone and say, oh, my God, I'm going to go to this class and we're going to get it done. So I want you to quit smoking. I want you to do a couple things that are really important. We're going to get into that right now and kind of show you the ways that make a difference. How about besides quitting smoking, besides limiting the amount of alcohol that you're drinking, getting the sugar out of your coffee, if you're going to drink coffee, drink it black. Otherwise, you're kind of ruining the effect of you know what you guys think coffee has. And by the way, make sure it's organic. Make sure it's as alkaline as you possibly can get it. There's a couple good ones out there. Uh, I may even tell you about that when you show up on the 15th. But you know it does have its you know double-edged sword as well. But exercise regularly, and if you did nothing more than walk 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Now your goal is two miles. So I don't care how how far you go in those 30 minutes, and I don't care how long it takes you to do two miles. You will decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease significantly. I told you about the studies at Kent State University way back in the early 70s, where they took people who had coronary placking and uh, post-stroke, post-heart attack, and they began to walk them. In some cases, no more than about 20 feet, and they had to stop, and another 20 feet, and they had to stop. And pretty soon they got them to where they were walking some distances and they saw a development of collateral circulation, more circulatory pathways, decrease in placking, all the things that extend uh, the heart's capacity and the ability and your ability to survive. So walking, if you like to jog, but you've already started doing, that's great. Swimming, dancing, biking, uh, using an elliptical you know, machine. Uh, getting into gentle martial arts like Tai Chi, you know, just gentle movement, getting into some yoga, uh, ice skating, rollerblading, cross-country skiing. As you begin to build up your endurance, you have to start where you're at. Don't think you're going to jump into something and become, you know, the best of the best when you haven't even started anything. But like I said, limit your alcohol. Uh, you know, you've you've got to get rid of those cigarettes. You just got to. And you got to get the pounds off, my friend. Being overweight is a major factor in low levels of cholesterol. If your body fat is up, your your HDLs are going to go down, period, end of story. You know, even if you lose five pounds, you know, you can dramatically lower your bad guys and increase your good guys. I mean, what does it take to do that except a little bit of lifestyle change? I'm going to show you how to do that. It's not difficult. You got to get rid of the trans fats, you know, all those chips and donuts and um, French fries and things like that, that, uh, that you get yourself into. And then the trans fats, you know, uh, you don't think about any packaged baked good, you know, such a pie or cookie or crackers. They all have the trans fats in them. You know, margarine, as we just talked about, by the way, you know, those non-dairy coffee creamers, get rid of them. Those are trans fats. And you got to keep them out of your diet. Yep, trans fats. You can't have that stuff. It's it's not okay. You're killing yourself. You're taking yourself out on a very ugly, bumpy, downhill run. So fried foods, french fries, donuts, chicken, fried chicken, not the other chicken, fried chicken. And if you're going to have chicken, you have to make sure. So, And then refrigerated cookie dough. Yep, sorry, you can't go eat the raw cookie dough anymore. Pizza dough, same thing. So, hey, I want to tell you something about some of the things that we're not aware of, you know, the things that we put into our body that can really grab you at a place where uh, it's not okay. Most of us think that we eat a hamburger, we're getting enough protein, right? And it's a good try. But we forgot the other piece. It's called organic, grass-fed, free-range beef coming from a very specific farm. Because you know those hamburgers you get at uh, any of the fast food places or any restaurant? Hamburger is the ground remains of when they slaughter an animal that they after they take the steaks and so forth. And remember, all these animals have good and bad bacteria 
if they haven't been raised organically and so forth. But here's the deal. It's not just from one farm. It's not just from five farms. It could be from hundreds or even thousands of different areas of the world that they bring into these these hamburger plants. They grind them up together, and now you have all these bacterium from a lot of different areas that you have no clue what they're putting into. And you're better off if it was coming from Europe, by the way, because Europeans won't take U.S. beef unless it's organic, free-ranged, and grass-fed stuff. Think about that for a minute. That means a lot of garbage you're putting in your system. So when you want to grab that hamburger with a, a refined gluten bread around it and with your French fries and your sodas, guess what you're doing to the rest of you? You want to eat complex carbohydrates. If, you, if you're allergic to gluten or you have a sensitivity to it, which so many of us are, you want, you want to eat things like buckwheat and quinoa and maybe some oats. And you have to stay away from the rest of the stuff. Uh, wild rice is, is cool. You can do that as well because it's really not a rice. It's a, it's a ground cover. So I gave you a lot of data. Think about it, what, what I just said. Think about all the things that you put in your system that you have control over that you could just kind of, you know, make a change, right? We want to limit the amount of red meat. I'm not saying that red meat is bad for you, but you know, a couple of times a week is cool. And but again, we want to make sure this it's not corn fed red meat. It's one of the worst things. In the United States of good old USA, every piece of corn, for the most part, 90 plus percent of it is what? It's genetically modified. And it's designed to take and feed animals and plump them up. So when you're getting those animals that are not fed with grass and the right things, you're going to plump you up too, just eating things that you should be eating. So you have to be very careful, very cautious. You know, we think sometimes we're doing a great job, but we're being duped. And I'm going to get into that as well. I'm going to show you Dr. Stephanie Pina, Dr. Naturopathic Medicine, and I will be co-hosting this, but I'm going to get into the specifics. I'm going to show you the 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 different processes, what happens over a period of time. But you know, the more important piece is this stuff is reversible. You can begin to change and turn things around exponentially if you take the right steps. But if you don't, you know, you're basically saying, ah, I don't care what happens. You know, you know, oh, that pain that I've been putting up for the last 15 years. Uh, it's like, really? You know, you didn't know that it was causing inflammation. You didn't know that that inflammatory reaction was changing your body's ability to handle stuff. Listen, increase all your fruits and vegetables. Make them organic as best you possibly can. The green leafy things, you know, the mustard greens and the collars and the beets and the turnips and things like that. Kale, okra, eggplant, you know, things of that nature. Get it done. Berries particularly, the dark color things, those are great for you. They have all kinds of special antioxidants that go in your body and help. And drink water. Yep, I said it. You know, water's not just for washing. You want to get yourself up to about two and a half liters a day, generally, across the board or more, depending on how big you are. And we'll talk about why that is and where to get your water. If you're doing it from a plastic bottle, you're putting yourself in jeopardy. The plastics have what we call xenoestrogens. They go into your system. And guess what? they also can cause a problem with what we're talking about. So set it aside, May the 15th, 6 p.m., the Results Center for Healing in Fairfax. And you can always get a hold of me. Go to drtomrosell.com. And don't forget, immediately after the program, follow me on live stream. I have a great program for you today. And <clears throat> I think you're going to enjoy this. We're going to we've fixed our technical glitches. Remember, I'm here continually for you for one reason only, and that's the only reason that I continue to touch and try to direct and make you understand that your health is in your hands. One, you deserve the information, but the more important piece is I truly love you all. Have a great day. See you next week. 
Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. Neuromuscular dentistry is more than just teeth and gums. Temporomandibular joint disorder is a very painful disorder, which only a skilled neuromuscular dentist can diagnose and treat. If you're in pain and suffering from TMJ, call the neuromuscular dentistry experts at Soft Touch Dental Care. Learn more about TMJ and how Dr. Michael Chung DDS has successfully treated patients. Visit softtouchdentalcare.com or call 703-319-6990. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Register for free today. Attend high blood pressure and cardiovascular problems on Wednesday, May 15th at 6 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Roselle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com.